Was it really an attempted coup on January 6? Even while what occurred on January 6 was not a coup, it was still tragic and should serve as a reminder that political violence must be prevented. Was the early 2021 uprising a coup attempt, or, a strike of the state? Was it indeed an illegal uprising to destabilize the government? The term, coup, appears to be a fresh and unwelcome addition to America's political language. Coups happen in other countries, not in ours. Is this the start of a new, terrible period of American violence and instability, as some political scientists and others are increasingly predicting? American democracy is strong, and predictions of a civil war may be exaggerated. The utter failure of the January 6 scheme really underlined the robustness of our democratic institutions, it does not always imply decline. Nonetheless, assaults to our constitutional order must be met with tenacity. Democracies that lose their resolve to fight are likely to be the most vulnerable to instability or authoritarian takeover, according to history. Coups are typically carried out in nations with weak or non-existent democratic institutions and traditions. Nonetheless, certain episodes of coups or other extra-constitutional endeavors by presidents to maintain power may teach us a few things. To heal the damage and secure future stability, we should focus on addressing the core causes, such as rebuilding trust in the American electoral system and better protecting our public institutions from political violence. Calling January 6 a coup attempt has about as much credibility as calling Donald Trump a Russian agent. After a month of public hearings, the January 6 committee has yet to show that a thorough coup plot transpired. The primary facts were well known months before, and they all revealed Trump's efforts to inform state election authorities, put pressure on Vice President Pence, and rally a throng to march on the Capitol to practice their First Amendment rights, all of which led to his impeachment on January 13, 2021. We know that Trump's so-called coup attempt was based on obscure procedures and magical thinking, and was ill-conceived and poorly coordinated. One version proposed by Trump advisors called for the election to be deemed disputed by Congress, allowing congressional delegations to choose the president later. Another plan proposed by law professor John Eastman had Vice President Pence, who was tasked with presiding over the joint session to certify the Electoral College result, throw out the electors of hotly fought states unilaterally. Some state Republican officials appear to have dubiously appointed alternative slates of electors as part of the plot. Rioters, for their part, arrive as a wildcard. They destroyed the scheme, which required ordered procedure, according to advisor Peter Navarro. If Trump incited his supporters to violence on purpose, as the January 6 committee claims, he may have misread how the strategy was supposed to operate. The Justice Department is pursuing charges against over 800 rioters, but only a few are facing seditious conspiracy counts. However, without the riot, the entire operation appears to be a desperate attempt to muddy the election results, hardly a coup attempt. In the end, the plot was doomed because it ran up against thick walls of Madisonian checks and balances. Our courts, federal bureaucracy, military, and states were all reluctant to hear claims. Republicans and Democrats both spoke out against it. Many members of Trump's administration, in fact, have testified to refute the conspiracy theory of a coup. Despite the fact that the conspiracy could never have succeeded, the committee's coup term for the plot is likely to persist given its extensive media and academic support along with hatred of Donald Trump. The University of Illinois' coup d'etat project believes the events of January 6 met the definition of an organized coup plan because they posed a genuine danger to our national leadership, among other considerations. Other authorities may disagree. In his landmark book, Coup d'etat, a practical handbook, 
political analyst Edward Lutwak defined a coup as a small group aiming to seize government instruments, which this effort was not. Based on his work and an analysis of several coup occurrences, we find that the January 6 coup attempt differs significantly from traditional coup attempts. First and foremost, what occurred was not the result of a national catastrophe. The real crisis was Joe Biden's questionable electoral victory. Protests against this outcome received little active backing. In 1992, Peruvian President Alberto Fujimori took entire authority and ruled by decree, citing the need to deal with a serious economic crisis and combat two lethal terrorist insurgencies. At the very least, there was an arguable crisis in that case. Second, there was no organized opposition to Trump's actions within the government. Aside from Trump, the only supporters of the proposal were uninvolved advisors like Navarro and Eastman. In contrast, following Turkey's failed attempt in 2016, Turkish authorities arrested tens of thousands of accused conspirators from all levels of government and civil society. Even though the coup attempt ended miserably, the conspirators knew they required popular backing to succeed. Finally, the president received no military backup. It's difficult to discover a successful or unsuccessful coup attempt that didn't have some military forces supporting it or attempting to thwart it. There was no potential of proclaiming martial law or obtaining military support for such steps in Trump's strategy. To paraphrase political philosopher Thomas Hobbes, the conspiracy possessed Trump but lacked clubs. All of these missing qualities may not indicate a coup, but that does not diminish its gravity or the necessity for caution. One lesson is that a failed coup attempt does not necessarily discredit the plotters. Democracies that are too lenient on coup conspirators may face devastating consequences in the end. For example, in 1992, Lieutenant Colonel Hugo Chavez, a Marxist with contempt for democratic institutions, attempted a brutal coup against Venezuela's government. Surprisingly, many Venezuelans who were fed up with the country's economic slump and corruption hailed him as a hero. Previously, Venezuela's tough-minded democratic government knew how to deal with coup plotters. They had lost their resolve against system foes by the 1990s. Instead of putting Chavez on trial for treason, then-President Rafael Caldera pardoned him and his colleagues, reasoning that the headstrong former commander would be tamed by participating in democratic democracy. Chavez was elected president four years later and, within a few years, had established a one-party dictatorship.